Hey YouTube. I know it's been a while, but I'm finally gonna have a little bit of a mini update on my little SL8 project thing a lob. But uh you know the usual. Of course it's empty. I know the last time you saw it uh was that my brief little range clip from uh, I think December or January, somewhere around there. So got a little bit of an outing. And let's just say its results are actually I was actually somewhat impressed with it. With just the iron sights. And although I'm not impressed with the iron sights themselves, I think they're basically garbo. Mostly because the only way I can adjust them is with the HK multi-tool or hex wrench, which I keep in this little pouch on the sling, which is also the same multi-tool used to take the two of the washers out. So the sights are a little bit annoying to adjust. But they are passable. I'm just not 100% sure what optic I'm going to eventually put on this, or if I'm going to keep it on this particular rail, or if I'm going to go back to the... Uh, the metal rail this rifle came with. I'm going to keep these hand guards though because these don't have nearly as much play as the uh, G36 style hand guards that it came with. The only thing I don't like is the sling mounting points on these hand guards are plastic like they are on here. So I probably would not be too rough with it. At least when it comes to that. I mean if I was actually going to use this for Real world situations, I probably would not even use the sling to be honest with you. I'll probably just carry it, even you know, if it might be kind of annoying. But either way, also another problem I've learned from using this is the magazines. They are a real pain in the ass to load. You would think a single stack magazine would be easy to load, but the springs they put in these things are very strong. So most of the time I usually just load five rounds into it and call it a day. So usually I just load like one with five and another one with five and I just do a reload every five rounds. Another thing I found while shooting it is the safety right here. It will all it will sometimes irritate your hand while you're shooting. And also this is kind of what your grip's going to look like. It's kind of awkward. It's not the most comfortable grip in the world. I also will say uh, from cleaning this thing, it's actually very, very easy to clean. Like, I'm coming from the AR world, so I'm used to the bolt always being filthy after you get done shooting. But there was almost no carbon at all on the bolt. Not even the bolt face had much on there. The only thing I really had to clean was... The gas system, and that was about it. The gas system on the barrel, and presto, that was done pretty quick. I guess I'll show you the target for the first outing. This is just like what the initial shots were right up here, and then move the sights down there and start getting in there. And believe it or not, that grouping was made. With this. <laughs> Some cheap steel case Russian ammo. So those groupings will probably tighten up with higher quality 223 or 5.56 ammunition and with a scope. So I'm pretty sure this rifle is capable of probably some pretty impressive accuracy for a cinematic rifle. Though then again, semi automatic rifles have came a long way since the days of bolt action rifles are always more accurate than semi automatics. Granted, this is late 1990s technology. <laughs> but it's still accurate enough. This light powder review? Nah, it's, I got it off. Anyway, this is just a quick little update video on this rifle. I need to get more range sessions out of it. Hopefully soon. And also figure out what kind of scope I want to put on there. I mean, 
I love to get a German or Austrian scope, but those are big money. <laughs> so I'll probably just have to settle for El Cheapo primary arms or something. We'll have to see. Anyways, have a nice day.